PhD candidate in systems engineering. And through my PhD coursework, I had a big aha moment when I realized that for a given system, certain inputs always lead to certain outputs. And for the professional system, there's certain inputs that always lead to career success. The tragedy is when you do the inputs of a different system, like the academic system, and you think that you apply it to a new, completely different system, and you expect to get the same results. So when I started my career, um, as I progressed, I realized that I was getting increasingly frustrated seeing my colleagues advancing and not getting to where I wanted to be professionally. So, you know, after reading article after article about the struggles women in technology face, you know, I could have been resigned to the fact that I just had too many factors working against me. I was a young, minority woman in technology, especially in the defense industry. Um, you know, I could have been resigned to the fact that I was just going to be another sad statistic in a male-dominated industry. But luckily, that didn't happen. In 2009, I started working with a mentor, and, and I started learning new skills and using those skills to get some really amazing results. You know, I got multiple achievement awards. I got a promotion. I got nominated as a woman to watch. I, gave, uh, I spoke at technical symposiums. I got innovation awards. And you know, I got tapped to lead projects that were typically given to people several levels above me. And, and it was like incredible. But learning these new skills, I mean, it was uncomfortable, especially since I never had to use them in the academic system, where I did quite well getting a, a full scholarship for academic excellence and um, graduating with honors in electrical engineering. So I want to explain exactly how these two systems are different so you realize why you need these new skills and how to systematically input them into your life. So the, the academic system, it's you learn new material, then you practice those skills through your homework, and then you take exams and tests. But in, and in this way, you learn a system that you typically, you know, to get through doing all these things, you, you get your habits and processes down, and then you use it your entire academic career. So basically, the academic system is very predictable. It's very structured, and it, um, it's, it uh, doesn't change. But on the other hand, the professional system is unstructured. You have a lot of subjective assessments, and it's um, constantly changing. So whereas in the academic system, the more rigidly you follow directions, the more likely you were to get a great grade. Whereas in, in the real world, the more you can get results by using your own creativity and your own you know, resourcefulness, then you're rewarded. So, and also, it's very subjective in that assessments, the, the person that is evaluating you could be somebody completely different than who you're performing the work for. So, and your assessments could be months after the work is done, and it's often written in a few short paragraphs that are self-written half the time. So, so um, you, have to, you have to do different things in this different environment, full of change, subjectivity, and um, it's very unstructured. So what are these four skills that always lead to career success? They are proactive communication, networking, working with a mentor, and continuous learning. So skill number one, proactive communication. When I worked with my mentee, and showed her how to write crisp bullet points showing the value she was providing to her program instead of just listing the tasks and talking to her team lead and offering to help when um, new projects and assignments came up and also um, meeting with her manager 
every few months instead of every six months, and also forwarding certain, um, any positive feedback she was getting from the people that she worked with, she ended up getting, in less than a year, an out-of-cycle promotion. And, and this was after having the previous year been told that she was doing everything right, but maybe in two or three years she'd get promoted. But proactive communication can sound like a lot like bragging, which is pretty uncomfortable for most women. So instead of thinking of it as self-promotion, you can think of it as just sharing the value that you're providing, showing how you're serving your business and how you're serving your team. So skill number two, networking. So advancement in this unstructured world happens in unstructured ways with opportunities that um, you hear about through your network or that your network brings to you. So, and also the US Bureau of Labor Statistics said that a whopping 70% of jobs are found through networking. So, you're in, and, and this goes to show that your employer, um, they wanna hire somebody whose work they know or that a trusted friend or colleague knows and that reduces their risk. But if you never take the time to build your network, that may be convenient for you, but it's a high risk strategy for anyone that's you know, trying to hire people. And when I told these, um, when I gave this advice to my cousin, who's in her first semester doing electrical engineering, she got the fantastic result of being offered a job by the head of recruiting of the CIA. And, <laughs> and, and, and you know, bypassing gatekeepers and the hundreds, if not thousands, of other students that were graduating at the same time. So networking can be kind of uncomfortable for women too. The, the superficial chit chat, the feeling of being sized up. But if you take a different perspective on this as well and think of it as a chance to build relationships instead of, um, and let your own natural curiosity of getting to know people uh, present itself. So skill number three, it's mentoring. Unfortunately, in the real world, there's no one clear-cut path to success. So your best bet is to work with somebody who has a few years, if not a few decades, of experience that um, they can help you show or see any obstacles that you have um, ahead of time. So my mentor had recommended me to do my master's and my PhD sooner rather than later so it wouldn't be a roadblock in my career as I try to advance. And also, one amazing side benefit is it helps you overcome an obstacle that a lot of women face in advocating for yourself. I mean, it was really uncomfortable for me to ask my manager to have monthly career talks or introduce myself to my center director. But since it was at the recommendation of my mentor, um, I did it. And just so I could share my, the fantastic results I was getting at our next meeting. So skill number four is continuous learning. So industries experience downturns and you know, surges. You never know what's happening. There's different technology being introduced. And as you are progressing in your career, you'll be having new responsibilities. So it's important to always keep your core skills fresh and marketable. And CEOs actually read 50 books a year to keep their skills fresh. So it, it's really important that you're constantly learning. In school, you only needed a few core skills, but in the workplace, you need a wide array of skills, starting right off the bat with interviewing and negotiating. These are skills you never had to do before. Also, you know, learning how to present and leadership. These are very critical skills to your success. And, you know, I gave up watching TV and started reading like over 100 books a year on things that I'm interested in and skills that I want to get better at. But there are some obstacles that women tend to face in implementing these skills. And they are twofold in that first, you don't realize you're moving into a different system and you don't realize that you need these new skills and you compare yourself and your, your, your self-confidence gets completely blown when you're comparing your 
new fledgling skill to somebody who's been doing it for decades. So that's one major problem. The second problem is time. Women, the research shows that women um, who are married with a child tend to have twice the amount of um, housework and three times the amount of childcare. So what can we do to get over these obstacles? First, give yourself permission to gradually learn. And you know, don't compare yourself to somebody who's been doing this for a really long time. And second, get creative in how you fit this into your life and, and work these skills in. You can learn about time management and productivity. You can um, go to meetup events where you practice your skills of continuous learning and networking in one. And of course, watching TED Talks, it's a great way to learn. <laughs> um, so I actually did my master's from SMU in engineering management through their distance pro program. And while working full time and living my own life dream of traveling to a different country every month, it, it was surreal to me that I'm earning my degree while I'm waiting for my connecting flight. So <laughs> and also your car or the gym can be your center of learning. Instead of listening to music, I listen to podcasts and audiobooks of people that I admire and, and learn on the go. So I want to end with a story of how I got here onto this stage today, and which is really a dream come true for me. So in 2013, you know, I was watching TED Talks. I was loving them. And I decided maybe someday, somehow, I would give my own TED Talk. And so I did what I did do best. I started constantly learning. I read Lifehacker and found tips and tricks about public speaking. I read some books. Um, I decided that I'm going to practice. And if anybody asked me to do any public speaking, I was going to say yes. So when one of my coworkers said, hey, can you present at a conference for me? I said, sure. What am I going to be speaking on? <laughs> and, and so, so you know, I gradually built up the skills. And in 2014, I got a little bit closer to my goal. And um, I attended the TEDx SMU event. And at the event, during lunch, I, a friend's coworker had applied to speak at a TED event. So just knowing somebody that was trying to do what I was trying to do, um, it was like a virtual mentor to me that it's possible. And then, fatefully, my friend, AKA Network, sent me the application because I was proactively communicating that this was my dream. And so I submitted an idea of something I'm incredibly passionate about and something I experienced in my career being so frustrated, but I didn't want anyone else to be frustrated like that when you know you can work on your own skills and improve yourself to achieve the uh, success that you wanted. So here I am today um, speaking to you all, and I just want you to know that your dreams are within reach if you're willing to do the work systematically like I have. Thank you. <laughs>